Hello everybody and welcome. This is exciting. Why you may ask? Well, on May 27th, for the first time since July 2011, humans will be launched from American soil into orbit around Earth. SpaceX will fly astronauts Douglas G. Hurley and Robert L. Behnken to the International Space Station on their Crew Dragon capsule for the aptly named Demonstration Mission 2 or DM2 for short. This will be the culmination of NASA's commercial crew program which began 10 years ago and had quite a few ups and downs. The really short version? SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing's CST-100 Starliner were the two vehicles that were chosen as the commercial launch providers for NASA. Crew Dragon already made its way to the ISS more than a year ago during DM-1 when it autonomously docked with the ISS and returned back to Earth successfully. Since then a few more tests, a few setbacks and improvements occurred and now we will finally see the beginning of a new era in spaceflight. And yes, of course I had to replicate the Mission in Kerbal Space program, in part because the official KSP Twitter account invited everybody to do so, claiming they will show the best entries to NASA. My sincere hope really is that somebody at NASA watches this, hi there, because my dream was and will always be that one day I would be able to go to space. Want proof? Here is a drawing I made when I was about 5 years old, back when Pluto was still a planet. Sorry for getting the scale and positions wrong, I know better now. And yeah, when somebody at NASA sees this, tell me what I can do so you will take me with you to space one day, okay? Deal? Anyways, back to the mission. Crew Dragon will launch on a Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral, same as it already did a year ago. So in regards to visuals, we won't see that much of a difference than before, I assume. What is new is the crew on board. Crew Dragon can carry up to 7 people, with NASA using a configuration of 4 seats. And now for the test mission of course they only have 2 astronauts on board. After the first stage completes its ascent burn, the booster will head back to land on the barge Of course I still love you, something I have not simulated here because this is really hard to do in Kerbal Space Program and I honestly didn't feel like doing it. After completing the burn to intercept the ISS, Crew Dragon will separate from the second stage and proceed to the space station with its own thrusters. And of course, the docking port cover will be open so that the vehicle can dock with the station. This momentous occasion called for a special build in KSP, which is why I recreated the ISS within the game, resulting in this 2210 part monstrosity. There's an entire video where I show how I built this, link in the description and on top via the eye icon. I even tried to launch it with a massive booster instead of dozens of space shuttle or proton launches, but as you can see here, I failed miserably. Look at that thing go! <laughs> again! No. No, again this time. I am sorry, but I just didn't have the time to do another attempt. This one failed attempt took 1 hour and 18 minutes from launch to the crack and drive ending. So I hope you don't mind if I didn't try again. While I was not able to launch the ISS and clash six shadows on fashion, SpaceX successfully launched something nice for all people with a browser. They made a game where anyone can try to dock Crew Dragon to the ISS. I'm not going into detail because this has been covered already by other YouTubers and news outlets, but suffice to say I was successful in safely docking the craft. Hey NASA people, I'm still available for that spaceflight opportunity. I mean it. I also did another attempt, this time just to have a closer look at the 3D model of the space station. I really would like to be up there one day. This huge structure in space is such a great achievement for humanity. Ok, back to the mission. 
astronauts Hurley and Benken will not be flying manually like I did, but will just monitor how the autonomous system takes them to the docking port, correctly named Pressurized Mating Adapter 2 or PMA2, which is currently part of the Harmony module of the ISS, also called Node 2. Why currently? Well, the ISS is modular, so this docking port segment can be moved around wherever it is needed the most. After a little while and wiggling with KSP's thruster controls, I managed to safely dock the vehicle to the ISS. You are of course seeing the multiple times sped up version of events. That 2210 part ISS really took its toll on my computer's performance. In the real world, the astronauts will then spend about 110 days in orbit and join their colleagues on board of the space station to do science and just enjoy the view of Earth from space. Which I'm really envious of. Their stay might be shorter, might be longer. NASA does not want to tell us a fixed duration yet, since this is a test mission and could be cut short at any time. But Crew Dragon could stay in space for up to 210 days. This was a requirement by NASA. So, after whatever duration Hurley and Banken have stayed on the ISS, they will once again board Crew Dragon and return to the surface. Before entering the atmosphere, the trunk will be jettisoned, it and the Falcon 9 stage being the only non-reusable parts of the launch vehicle. During descent, the heat shield will hopefully protect both astronauts from the rigors of re-entry, and then the new and improved parachute system will slow their descent until they splash down in the Atlantic just off the coast of Florida. SpaceX's Go Navigator recovery ship will then collect the capsule and deliver it and its crew hopefully unharmed back to Cape Canaveral. It's been a long way for the commercial crew program, but it appears that it is finally going to roar to life for real. Boeing Starliner, the other crew vehicle of the program, had a setback during its first test flight, but I am sure it will join Crew Dragon soon in delivering crew and supply to the ISS. This will finally give launch capabilities back to the United States that they lost after retiring the Space Shuttle, forcing them to buy expensive seats on Russian Soyuz vehicles. These truly are exciting times for space fans and I hope all of us will be able to watch a successful launch next Wednesday, when DM2 is set to launch for real. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies, the links are in the description. Thanks for watching, goodbye.